The 2019 Nobel Prize for Physics has just been announced, with a split prize between two fields of astronomy, one of which is exoplanets. Astronomers Michel Mayor and Didier Kellos pick up one half of the prize for their discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a solar-type star, a discovery first announced in 1995. The other half of the prize goes to James Peebles for theoretical discoveries in physical cosmology. Let me first say a huge congratulations to all three Nobel Prize laureates, but as an exoplanet astronomer, I have to admit that I am particularly excited about the exoplanet part of the prize. The Nobel Prize is widely considered the highest honor a scientist can receive. Perhaps as a result of this, it understandably every year sparks a huge amount of debate and discussion about the selection process. For example, amongst the now 212 Nobel Physics Laureates, only three are women. And I would say that it stretches credibility to argue that this is a statistical anomaly. If the Nobel Prize were equally divided between men and women, then the probability of having three women or less win this Nobel Prize amongst a list of 212 would be less than one in 1,000 billion 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 astronomical odds. And yet, here again, we have three male laureates. Now, I don't want to dismiss this point. It's certainly a very valid criticism of the Nobel Prize. But today, I really just want to focus on the fact that the Nobel Prize has been awarded to exoplanetary science. And this is fantastic news for my field. What it means is that exoplanets has been recognized as a topic worthy of the highest scientific accolade possible. It really does elevate the entire field establishing a consensus view that exoplanets is of deep value to the scientific enterprise more generally. Further, there are now hundreds of articles, videos, and podcasts being made about exoplanets to publicize and explain this year's prize, which only serve to further deepen the public's connection and knowledge of our field. And so, today is a great day for exoplanetary science. Ever since I joined the field, even back as a PhD student, I recall vividly having conversations with my colleagues about the Nobel buzz that perhaps one day Mayor and Kellos might indeed win a Nobel Prize. And the question that was often raised was not so much whether they deserve to have a Nobel Prize, but whether the field of exoplanets would ever be considered suitable for a Nobel Prize in physics. And that's because traditionally the Nobel Prize in Physics has been more often awarded to fundamental physics. Now Alfred Nobel didn't explicitly demand that, he wrote that it should go to the person who made the most important discovery or invention within the field of physics. But selection committees have tended to favor discoveries in fundamental physics. Now fundamental is not particularly well defined here, but some examples of previous prizes have gone to things like discovering the constituent particles of nature, the way in which forces work, and the expansion of the universe. Exoplanets could be argued to not be fundamental in the same sense as those previous examples. After all, we already know of many examples of planets within our own solar system. So for me, this is the biggest story of today, that exoplanetary science has crossed a threshold, if you will, where it is now accepted that the questions it is asking and the discoveries it is making are of the highest scientific importance, not just in the field of astronomy, but in physics in its entirety. Now, a Nobel Prize cannot be divided between more than two works and three laureates. Now, I've often heard it said that if a Nobel Prize were ever awarded to exoplanets, the Swiss astronomers Mayor and Kellos were the dead favorites. This is because they made the first unambiguous discovery of an exoplanet orbiting another sun-like star in 1995, a planet called 51 Pegasi b. They observed that the star wobbled back and forth in response to a close-in planet, effectively making the star appear periodically bluer and then redder. 
That discovery catalyzed the field. It electrified astronomers and it transformed us from an era where exoplanets was a niche subject to being an era of full-blown global surveys searching for other worlds. That paper had a profound impact, a transformative impact on our field. And it is for that reason that the Nobel Prize was awarded and it is richly deserved. Now, although this is Mayor and Kellogg's day, I want to give credit and highlight the fact that they certainly weren't the only exoplanet pioneers. For example, in 1989, six years prior to the announcement of 51 Pegasi b, Dave Latham and colleagues at Harvard discovered an object with a minimum mass of 11 Jupiter masses orbiting a sun-like star. But being a conservative scientist by his very nature, Latham argued that it was possible this was in fact a brown dwarf rather than a planet. And so the paper never had the same impact that 51 Pegasi b did. Around the same time, a Canadian team led by Bruce Campbell found evidence for a Jovian planet around a giant star in 1988, which they also expressed skepticism about. But like Latham's world, it actually turned out to be real. And again, a similar thing happened in 1993 when Hatzer and Cochrane found a giant planet signal around the giant star Pollux, which again turned out to be real. And let me also mention Alexander Washgan and Dale Frail, who announced planets orbiting a pulsar star all the way back in 1992, which was the first unambiguous discovery of a planet around any type of star. As a working exoplanet astronomer, I just want to say thank you to all of those exoplanet astronomers who were working during those pioneering years, including Mayer and Kellers and all of those others that helped transform our field into what it is today. Unfortunately, I kind of doubt that we'll see another Nobel Prize awarded to any of those firsts again. However, now that we have had an exoplanet Nobel Prize, Perhaps the doors have opened and we might see Nobel Prizes awarded to exoplanetary science again in the future. If so, I want to hear your thoughts. What kinds of discoveries in the field of exoplanets can you imagine perhaps being awarded a Nobel Prize one day in the future? Let me know down below in the comments section. So thank you for tuning in everybody and until the next video, stay thoughtful, stay curious.